Markdown, Restructured Text, and ASCII-Doc. These are the three main markup formats that most people use for writing technical documentation. Markdown is pretty well supported across all IDEs and text editors, but the other two, not so much. I'm Christian Schiller, and in this video, I am gonna take a look at a new standalone editor IDE writing experience purely for ASCII doc called ADOC Studio. Let's get started. First, of course, you open ADOC Studio as this is still a beta app and running through Apple's test flight, then you get a slightly different uh, messages when it opens that you won't see when the final version is released. I'm going to begin by creating a new project. This gives you a default ADOC file and a location for media. And the thing here is you kind of need to know some ASCII doc to use it. If you're not sure what the syntax is, there's a limited amount of shortcuts available from some sort of standard formatting. For headings, it's usually this equals syntax. And for some of the other syntax, it's kind of the same as most other markup languages. Asterixes, underscores for bold and italic, that kind of thing. So a lot of the options here are just macOS default ones. And there's no kind of command palette that you might have got used to in other applications that lets you find commands if you're not quite sure what they are. To begin with, I've pasted in some text here from the blog version of this video. You can see there's a handful of options for the preview, different formats, different styles, this is the ASCII Doctor one, which is a very popular tool chain, an appearance based on light, dark. And interestingly, this doesn't really show in the HTML, but does in other formats. And then some attributes you can use to override certain variables, which I will come to later. You can see here the structure, the subheadings, etc. Any issues, there aren't any in this document. And then the folder structure, hide and show that sidebar. You can add new components here. For the most part so far, I've been doing the standalone document, but let's try a composite document. And basically this is an ADOC Studio feature. You can create a folder name, give it a title, and then every other file in that subfolder just gets collated into one file. So you can see the different components here. And when I click on the main one, that's how it's rendered pretty much. Let's have a quick look at the configuration options for the application. There's not a massive amount. You have the kind of general here, line numbers, folding, file extensions, where to indent and line widths, etc. Kind of thing you expect in an editor. And now you can see the line numbers there, quite light on the right hand side, which is different. <laughs> More interestingly, here's where you can add and override the editor styles and the product styles. I'm not 100% sure where these come from because if you try to add one, it asks you to pick a location. So <laughs> it's not 100% sure where they come from. But most of this will be familiar to you if you've ever seen any other kind of visual editor, like even Scrivener, for example, has sections like this, Ulysses, that kind of thing. As I'm not that knowledgeable on ASCII doc, I will open up, this is actually the manual for ADOC Studio, so you can kind of dog food, to see some of the sorts of syntax that might be available. So let's have that open on one side and then just a document to mess around with on the other side. And you can see that when you start to type syntax, you do get this helpful pop-up, but you have to know what to start typing. These are variables, colons are variables. So this is what is currently defined. This is, so this is some um, default variables that are available. And you can just select one from the list or of course just finish typing it to then display the value of that variable. And you can, of course, create your own, which is more useful. Like you can see here, this app name, and then the value is rendered in these curly brackets. 
And you can also see here some logic. ASCII doc has logic by default. And all of these carry through into the sub levels. So there, for example, is app name. I don't really know how that got there. Maybe that's a standard term, but it has no value at the moment. So it just in the preview outputs the actual syntax. So what you do is ASCII doc actually has kind of the equivalent of front matter, but you don't have to put it between the triple dashes like you do in Mark now with YAML. Instead, just before the first heading, you define those variables. So I'll create one here called app name, give it a value, the very helpful value. <laughs> and then within a second, you can now see that it's showing the right value of that variable in the preview and nothing above the heading in the preview. Let's try something a little bit more interesting then. I'm going to create a custom variable. There we go, world. You might be able to guess what I'm going to do here. And we don't have to do any kind of fancy string interpolation. ASCII doc just supports all of this. And now we see the custom variable is showing. And we get hello custom variable, which in this case is world. And if I change that variable, then of course the preview will change. So let's make another custom variable to have a bit of logic. So I'm going to create platform and Mac. And I want to do a logical check. And looking in this example to the right hand side, I can see what the syntax is down the bottom here in this light gray, if eval. And if I do start typing, it does actually at some point <laughs> auto complete into a snippet here and sort of guides you through the process. So you need to know the syntax, but once you have got it in, it does help you with the rest of it. So I can find my custom variable, which is platform, a long list, quite a ways down this list, there it is. And the comparison, we want it to be equal to. And text, in this case, we can actually have some interesting variable logic here, uh, but Mac, so this is now true, but there's nothing in between the block. So let's put the hello world there. There we go, hello world. And if we change the value of the variable to something else, the text disappears because it's not true anymore. That's pretty cool. With Markdown, you often need other tools for this kind of thing, and ASCII Doctors has it built in. And ADOC Studio will help guide you through some of that. And just having a quick scroll through here, you can see some of the other ways you can use these variables. So it can also be interpolated into a folder name, for example. You can define regions. You can see a whole lot happening here. I mean, the interesting thing with something like ASCII doc is it becomes almost looking like a programming language and you have to have people who can can understand and, and use that. That may not be familiar to everyone who's used to something as more bare bones as Markdown. You can also use what ASCII doc calls attributes in these square brackets to change something. So I will change this from upper alpha to lower alpha and you see the list type changes. These angle brackets are links to internal links on the same page, like an anchor link in Markdown and HTML. So that will take you to an internal link called text editor, an internal link called preview. You can also, again, see another evaluation. Check here. And just continuing to look through the manual is a really good way of learning some of the syntax, some of the attributes you can use, some of the way you can add keyboard shortcut formatting. It's sort of semantic markup that ASCII doc lets you do admonitions here. So we could change it from tip to warning, for example. And we again, we get a little pop-up assistant showing you what's going to happen. And much, much, much more. So previewing, exporting, and publishing. I already looked at the preview. Let's have a look at how we can then export. So actually click the share icon, the macOS share icon. And we can see by default, there's PDF HTML text. Let's do a PDF. All of these formats apply. We'll do dark mode, it won't add any attributes. You can also set the page size and what to do with the PDF. Sort of a macOS feature, export that. 
give it a moment to generate it. And I'll open it up. And here it is rendered in dark mode because that's what I set. Importing external projects into Adoc Studio is that a lot of people use Antora, which is a way of combining multiple sources into a project through ASCII doc. And it doesn't support that. A lot of the examples you find use it, Antora. It's almost kind of a default in many large projects. But what you can do is you can add existing folders. And this is an Antora project, so it's a little hard to see it working, but it will pick up most things. It just won't handle those Antora specifics that it adds on top. The combining of the sources, for example. Okay, so far so good, but this will be a paid project. So how does it compare to some of the free options out there already? Is it going to be worth paying for? So I'm going to open up uh, the same project we're just looking at in Visual Studio Code. Look at the manual. You can see there is a project folder, which is not going to really render, but everything else should work. And of pure interest, there it is. It's just a bunch of JSON-esque by the looks of it. Here's the actual content. There's the start page. So there's all the variables. Kind of similar. They look a bit different. It has detected its ASCII doc. I do have the ASCII doc extension currently enabled here. And it does have syntax highlighting, etc., etc. And if we open up a preview, we'll get, I think, what you expect by now. A locked preview there. It renders things slightly differently enough for a preview. Let's see what some of the kind of auto completion is like. So I'm going to open up the project I was just messing around with because I it's much simpler and I just want to see how some of the things I added render and what we can change. So I'm just going to open up the preview again. There we go. It looks pretty much as we expect. And again, if I change the variables, it will update. You have to hit save for it to update in VS Code. And likewise, if I open up those brackets, you can see it does auto-complete the variables that are available. But not much else. So as with ADOC Studio, if I kind of vaguely knew some syntax at some point, it would provide some assistance, but not so much in VS Code. It's basically variables, syntax highlighting. And it doesn't really add much else, although it doesn't really do that for anything else either. Now I've added a duplicate heading here, so this is giving us an error multiple times. I'm not quite sure why, but anyway. And you can do basic formatting through using, just selecting the text and adding again the syntax you need to know. This is similar with some of the markdown support, depends on the plugin, because there's more than one option in VS Code. And having a look, it does provide snippets. So how do we open them? It's a command that we can open. So let's do that and see what's available. I go back to the document. Let's just get rid of that. Trigger the command. So it's part of the standard snippets command. And you can see the snippet is provided. There's not a tremendous amount of them. None of that logic or anything like that. You kind of just have to know those. Ordered list, unordered list. I mean, it's sort of fairly basic. And considering the options that are available in ASCII doc, and maybe this is, there's always this interesting difference between ASCII doc and ASCII doctor. Maybe this is just the ASCII doc provided snippets. And yeah, you can see some of them here, but there's not that many really. And the composite document, it was really an ADOC Studio feature. As far as VS Code is concerned, it's just a folder of files, so it doesn't really do anything. Let's now reopen that in ADOC Studio and see how it handles the errors. You can see it highlighted here, and then under the issues, the issue doesn't offer to fix it for you in any way, shape, or form, which would be cool, I guess. <laughs> Much like in VS Code, it just shows it as an error. And that was my look at ADOC Studio, a new standalone tool purely for working in ASCII doc. What do you think? Would you use it over a plugin in VS Code or in an IntelliJ IDE? Or if you're using Vim and those types of things? Let me know in the comments below. 
always interesting to hear people's opinions and experiences. You can find more about Adoc Studio at the link above and how to get hold of a copy when it is released. And you can find more about me at christianchella.com where you can find out how to support my work and everything else I do. Or of course, you can just subscribe right here in YouTube, like this video, share this video, just leave a nice comment or a negative one. That's okay. Every little helps. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Take care and I will see you all next time.